To help us understand all of this, we're going to get some help from our old friends, our participant Owen, his support staff Carlos, and Owen's mom, Maxine. You'll hear me voicing Maxine. As the circle approver, I am Carlos's supervisor. Not a big stretch for me, as I'm already doing this for my son's support staff. That's right, and it's not a stretch for me to play the role of Carlos, Owen's support staff, as I formerly worked as a support staff myself. Let's talk about how eTime will determine home versus community. It starts with the location of the participant's home. Because ISS already knows the home address for its participants, we can use publicly available data to retrieve the latitude and longitude of the home. Using that information, we draw a geofence around Owen's home's location. This sounds complicated, but it really just means that we create a virtual circle of space around the home. Anything inside that circle is assumed to be home, and anything that's outside of that circle is assumed to be community. So when Carlos is standing next to the front door and starts his shift, we're comparing the location returned from his device at that moment to the geofence. And since he's inside the geofence, we're determining that the shift starts at home. That's right. And if he's at the park down the street when he ends his shift, the location return from his device is going to be calculated as outside the geofence. This will be shown simply as community. You know, Mike, this brings up a thought I have about the addresses in the ISS system. My address as a primary contact for my son is different from his address since he lives in an apartment. I currently only have my address in the ISS system because I help him with all his correspondence. But that needs to be changed now. I'm glad you mentioned that, Liz. Yes, ISS will need the correct address for your son's home, the location where the services are happening. But don't worry, it can be noted in the system that all correspondences should go to your home address as his primary contact, so you can continue getting any ISS mail for him if you choose. So I guess I should contact my son's SDC to change the address information soon. Absolutely. If you don't change it, then eTime will be evaluating your son's support staff work as community, even when it's actually happening in his home. Let's see how this actually works in practice. Carlos arrives for his shift just as Maxine is leaving for work. As Carlos starts his shift, eTime requests his location and determines it as home. Owen and Carlos have a busy day planned. First, they head to the library to check out the latest comics and find a novel for Owen to read. Does ISS know that Owen is at the library? No, they do not. Since the shift was not started or ended at the library, Carlos and Owen's location is not recorded in e-time and not sent to the state. So what happens next? Owen is hungry, so they walk over to their favorite pizzeria to grab lunch. It's a really nice day, so they then head to the park for a picnic. Are those locations known? Carlos's shift still hasn't ended, so no, their location is not requested or calculated at either stop. After lunch, the last stop is the local movie theater where Owen works. Carlos says goodbye to Owen and ends his shift. Maxine will be picking Owen up after work. But ISS does know that Owen and Carlos went to the movies, right? Technically, no. What ISS knows is that Carlos ended his shift outside of Owen's home. This means that eTime will record the shift end as community. ISS will not be reporting the precise location of Carlos's shift end, just that it ended in the community and not Owen's home. 